So let's play. This time, let's play a little bit more. Um, a little bit more quiet. I'm gonna go knight f3. I've been playing some e4 stuff, but now it's time for some positional stuff. So he goes c5. He invites a Sicilian, but we're absolutely not gonna not gonna go as exciting as a Sicilian. We'll play something a bit more quiet. Now I could go bishop here and after e5 allow some kind of uh, potentially some reverse King's Indian, right? Where he plays like he puts his pawns and pieces as if he were white in a normal King's Indian. Um, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I'll go instead. Let me go d4. There's a few ways to, to play this position. I'm going to go d4. Okay, the Fuchsia says you can't enforce a challenge color in your profile. Okay, so that is good. So Travis Dover has a, a good way of um, playing, I think, against this knight f3 g3 stuff. Just c5 and knight c6. I think it's one of the one of the more uh, reliable uh, ways to play. And my opponent goes for this uh, setup here. And now I'm wondering, can I go knight b5, queen a5, knight here, a6. It's a bit annoying. Um, so let's go ahead and take. And we let him build his center. Ah, okay, maybe he would go d takes. So we're gonna let him build uh, potentially a center. But the problem, if you do go about building your center like this, is that white may actually uh, undermine it. And if you look at this position, actually, uh, here's a question for the chat. Does anybody, like, is anybody reminded as to what this position kind of looks like with colors reversed? What, what opening does it remind you of with colors reversed? Yes, the Fuchsia gets it right. It's a reversed Grunfeld. And um, the problem with the reverse Grunfeld is it's a very dynamic opening. And oftentimes in a Grunfeld, you have to be very, as a result of dynamic opening, one tempo can be very valuable. So in my experience, in, in my view, playing the reverse Grunfeld is dangerous. I'm not saying that... Um, that it's the end of the world. There's a lot of reverse Grunfeld lines that are actually fine for black, um, but you definitely have to be a little bit careful. Otherwise, your center can collapse because if you're playing the the Grunfeld, uh, sort of the classical line, where you get the center. Sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. I actually haven't recorded. I haven't streamed for. Um, for Chess Factor in a while, because uh, we were planning to do some recordings in uh, January, or sorry, in early February, but um, after I came back from Gibraltar, from the, the chess tournament I was playing, um, but the second I came back, I just got completely crushed with a pretty nasty flu, um, and I it took me weeks to, to get back on, on track, and just as it looked like I was getting back on track, now I'm getting... Uh, seem to be sneezing a lot uh, today. So I hope it's not a cold, um, but uh, but yeah, but we'll see. So my opponent's gone into a little bit of a think here. The problem for him is he doesn't have the move uh, d takes c4 because of bishop takes c6, or d4 again because of bishop takes c6. He's going knight e7, but this is not really ideal because the bishop here on, on f8 is uh, is now stuck. On the other hand, I guess he wants to develop something like this. Well, one idea that I have, similar to in Grunfeld, you put the queen on a5. One idea that I have is to put the queen on a4. Um, another option that I have is to first take, take, and then to go queen a4 with a check. Um, 
my concern is he might go bishop d7 and then and then be fine. Another option that I have is obviously just to castle. Um, so ah, but if castle, he maybe wants d4, hits my knight, and then when I move my knight, he might actually be uh, be interested in taking the pawn. So I'm just actually just going to take on d5. I'm expecting c takes d5. If he goes knight takes d5 or something like this, I'll just castle, and his development becomes a lot easier because he his his bishop isn't being plugged in by this by this knight. But on the other hand, he has a permanent weakness here uh, for the rest of the game. Also, if knight takes d5, I might have some queen a4 ideas. Queen d7, knight takes, bishop takes. No, actually, that that's not so interesting. Bishop takes, pawn takes. Everything is under control for black. I knew, I knew I'd hear some coronavirus comments. I knew I had brought them brought them upon me. So he's gone for c takes d5. Um, center is now very safe. Uh, sorry, center, center is now is very nice uh, for him. Um, but on the other hand, the, the, the development is very difficult for him because he really would want this bishop uh, to be solved, this problem with the bishop. So he can go g6 bishop here and queenside and kingside castle. And that would solve all his problems. The question is, does he have time for that? Can I actually do something in that time uh, that will will give him problems? So of course, I want to undermine his center. He also just created some dark square weaknesses. So I also want to bring in my pieces into play. So bishop g5 here is the move that makes the most sense to me. And it feels like he's actually not going to be able to um, survive the assault on his center. Uh, he didn't play the the most precise uh, the most precise moves. I think that to take over the center here is maybe just too much. Uh, maybe you need to develop uh, castle and then you know play like this because after this you're playing you know a reverse Grunfeld that's extremely dangerous. And then once you play this move ninety seven here, I feel it's very very difficult. And g six here, bishop g five. Now he's going rook b8, which makes a lot of sense because he wants to step out of this. But the problem after rook b8 is my threat here is, is bishop f6. Um, and now he's forced to go in rook g8. And then I'll, I'll I'll think about it here in terms of whether I want to, for example, take this pawn or whether I want to um, do anything else. I'm going to take the pawn because, um, well, it's it's a free pawn in the sense that if he goes rook takes b2, we'd be level on pawns, but then I have ideas like knight takes d5 with uh, a nasty discovered check, it doesn't discovered attack here on the rook on b2. So I would um, I would be winning material there because he wouldn't have time to move his rook because after rook takes, knight takes, if he moves his rook, then I'll go knight f6 and that's, uh, that's gonna be checkmate. So I know he cannot take and he's now defending his rook. And I'm happier to, let's say, grab this pawn here, grab this pawn, than this one, given a choice, because uh, now, after this one, I split his structure. So let's say that in this position, I took away this pawn, we would see here it would have one pawn, and then a second pawn chain here uh, on the king side. But if I remove this pawn, he actually is left with three pawn chains, one, two, and then this third pawn chain here. He has gone for rook takes b2, so knight takes, I think, is just uh, winning. I also have the option of going via knight e4, but I don't see why not to take like this. I'm just double checking that there's nothing, but I don't see I don't see anything. He can take here, I can take here. My bishop on b2 will be undefended, but I don't see any way of him capitalizing on that. If, for example, bishop takes g2, I could just take, and I don't see any, you know, he can't put his queen on b7, let's say that would win the, the piece. But on top of that, I could also just take the queens off intermezzo. He's gone bishop takes, I'll go bishop takes, and now I'll pre-move queen takes queen um, in the event that he does that. I'm happy to transition into an endgame and um, and hopefully, hopefully convert that way. Now, the other option would be to not do that, to just take here and say to him, either we keep the queens on the board and I go for a mating attack rather than a transition, 
And if you do exchange, then that's going to be better for me because I go rook takes and I already have the rook into play. But I, for me, I personally think queen takes. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a nasty one there for him. Very, very dangerous to play uh, a reverse, uh, a reverse uh, Grunfeld like this. This move e5, it's a bit un uncommon because of this move that I was saying, can you go knight b5 here? But I was a little bit worried after queen a6 here, knight 1c3, a6 here. I was not sure, um, but I guess, okay, knight d6, bishop takes and queen takes would have actually been uh, very good. And a little trick that I want to show you guys here, a lot of players at the club level, they make this mistake d5. You can see there isn't a single game at the engine, at, at the club, <laughs> not at the engine, at the master level. Uh, but the trap that they fall into very often is queen takes d5 and then after you take here knight c7 and you pick up this queen. Now it turns out here engines are ruining our fun by saying that after queen e7 there's some kind of compensation because the white uh, the white development is a bit uh, poor but I don't I, I don't trust that it's full compensation there. Um, let's see if we can potentially prove this theory by adding lead chess games. And you can see that here on Lee Chess, there's like 173 games. And after queen takes d5, the most popular response is queen takes d5 here, which indicates that most of the time when people allow this, they're not doing it, you know. Uh, in fact, this move queen e7 has only ever been played once, the top engine move. Um, so most of the time they're not doing this for due to deep analysis, but rather just because of this little tactical idea. Um or just not not being aware of the tactical idea. So knight b5 maybe the maybe the better continuation, but I like this approach. It doesn't seem very serious, but it invites this natural looking move d5. You can see that at the uh, master level there haven't been so many games like this. Knight f6 has been played mostly, but you see that at the lead chess level you see 936 times d5 has been played, and after c4 here bishop e6. Uh, we have this position we, tra we, we transpose to a very uh, standard position, but after knight c3, you have to play either bishop b4 or knight f6, but already the engines really don't like this position, and the, the white score is very, very satisfactory here. Uh, I went c takes d5, maybe better just to play castle. I was afraid of this d4 idea, but it turns out that uh, engine does not worry so much about this pawn grab because it says queen c2, and after bishop d5, e4. I don't know though, the engine does not seem so convinced, so at first sight, I'm not super convinced. I guess the point is that after takes, takes, we're down a pawn, but uh, we've got a lot of open files and a lot of pressure, so I can see that. Um, and if bishop e6, then the knight jumps to a beautiful square. So I, I can appreciate that white would be better here, um, but I'm not completely hating on myself for taking here and avoiding those complications and then simply castling. And here, black really needs to be extremely careful already. You can see maybe a move like queen d7 makes a lot of sense here, shutting down activity on this diagonal and preparing to put the rook on d8 in order to defend here uh, on d5. But very easy to go wrong and say, I want to develop here and g6 is a huge blunder and after bishop g5, the game is completely over. So. Generally speaking, in these positions, you can see black is kind of hanging on there okay if he really knows his stuff, but it's also very, very dangerous. If you go wrong, uh, you know, it's very one natural move and you're and you're dead. Okay, so um, let's, let's play some more. 